Okay, this video is for Math 1, 1.2.1. And this is kind of the first video on writing equations. So we kind of got off, uh, our first lesson was writing expressions. So let's kind of first talk about what are equations. So before we talked about an expression, an expression is a mathematical statement, like 2 plus 3. That is an expression, okay? Now, when you have an expression equal another expression, then that becomes an equation, okay? So the equation involves an equal sign. That's what defines the equation. If there is no equal sign, then it's simply an expression. When two expressions are equal to each other, that is what defines the equation. So another example would be 2 plus 3 is equal to 4 plus 1. Those two expressions are equivalent. They both equal 5. So sometimes it might be an you know, expression of multiple terms, but, you know, it could be very simple. 2 plus, for instance, x is equal to 5. So this is an equation. We have an expression on this side. This is an expression. It's a single number. It's a single term, but it's still an expression. And when they're equal to each other, that's an equation. So what we're working on in this lesson is, you know, translating to an equation where we have both expressions on equal on either side of the equal sign. So let's take a look at three examples. So this is example one from 1.2.1. So what we have here is uh, James earns $15 an hour as a bank teller. In one week, he pays 17% of his earnings to state and federal taxes. His take-home pay for the week is $460.65. How many hours did James work? Okay. Now, so this $15, he doesn't take home that much money. He takes home less because he has to pay taxes. So let's kind of write a verbal statement what this looks like. So this is how much James made, you know, minus what he has to pay for taxes. And that equals his take home. Okay. So those are the kind of the different components. So the first thing you have to do is logically kind of write out a sentence what makes sense. All right. So how much did he make? So let's first define um, what it is. So I'm going to have hours. I'm going to use H for the number of hours that he worked. Okay. So number of hours worked. Okay, so in this case, we're going to say, okay, how much did he work? Well, he works for so many hours at $15 an hour, so 15H. Now, he has to then pay 17%. So again, we've changed it to a decimal, but it's not just 0 0.17. That would be like 17 cents. He pays 17% of something, so it's always of something. And he's paying 7% of what he made. So what did he make? We just defined that as 15H. So notice they put that here. Okay, then it's take home is check it down in a week, was this much money after taxes. So now we have established an equation known as an expression on the left. It has right now two terms, and we have an expression on the right, a single number, okay, constant. Now what we can do is get a like term. So we're going to multiply these two items together, okay, and notice 0.17 times 15 is 2.55. So I just used my calculator for that. So roughly, what this means is he's paying, of every hour he works, $2.55 to the government for taxes. Now, being that these are both like terms, they both have an H in it, they both have to do with the number of hours he worked, we could take 15 minus 2.55 and get 12.45 hours. And then that equals $460 and change. Okay. So notice there's my equation, okay? And if I want to, you know, we can slide that over there so we can kind of see it. So here's my equation in the end. Notice it has one term on each side. This term is made up of two factors, a coefficient, the 12.45, and a variable h. And this is just a constant over here, okay? Now, algebra tells us how do we solve for h. We simply divide by 12.45. If we see multiplication, you want to undo it, okay? You have to get h by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 12.45. And that'll tell us h is by itself. So the number of hours worked is I type this into my calculator and we get 37 hours. Okay. So the important thing is let's kind of identify the pieces. So this number right here, this coefficient tells us that is how much you make per hour to take home. You make $12.45 an hour that you get to keep 
the other two dollars and fifty five cents is what the government keeps. Okay, together that's what the fifteen dollars comes from. So again, what we're trying to do is understand the pieces of the equations. Okay, not so much the solving it. Let's take a look at our example. Okay. Brianna saves six hundred dollars to buy a TV. If the TV she wants costs eighteen hundred dollars and she saves twenty dollars a week, how many years? Okay, so notice one thing that jumps out right here is weeks and years. So we have two different units. So in the end, we're going to put in years. So I'm just going to kind of highlight that and star it. Okay. Now let's kind of come up with an equation. So we want to buy a TV that is $1,800. So there's my total. So that's one side of the equation. That's an expression. Over here, we have two pieces. How much we already saved initially plus how much we're going to save weekly. So we're going to say, you know, weekly save. So this is the initial save plus the weekly save. So let's kind of put some numbers to this. We have already saved $600. And she's going to save $20. And again, I'm going to use the variable W. And again, let's always define our variable. W represents the number of weeks. Okay. Now again, I know our answer wants to be in years, but we'll get there. Let's kind of work with what we're given. So now we have an equation. An expression on one side expression on the other. So notice this expression right here. We have a constant, a number that doesn't change. The $600 does not change. We have a 20, which is the coefficient that tells you how much per week. That doesn't change. So the only thing that really changes is the variable W, this factor, and that's the number of weeks she works. Okay. In order to solve this problem, logically a lot of people would say, well, don't we have to subtract 600 first? Well, yes. Algebra says to undo addition, we subtract. Okay. So again, algebra, all it is is systematic logic. Okay, that math tells us what to do. So once I have established this equation, I don't have to think as much anymore. I just follow the rules of algebra, and the math will do the thinking for me. So 20W is equal to 1,200. Okay. So now W goes into there. Oh, let's see here. 20 goes into there. 60 weeks. Okay. It's kind of doing the math there. Now, let's go ahead and take the 60 weeks, and we need to convert it to years. So to do this, we have to do a conversion. Okay? We know that one year is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, 52 weeks. Okay? So to do a conversion, we want to do start with 60 weeks, and we want to end up in years. Okay? Now, to do this, we have to do a conversion. We have to get rid of the weeks, okay? So I'm going to put 52 weeks in the bottom, and we're going to put one year on top. Now notice here, when we do this, these two cancel each other out. One top, one bottom. It's like dividing by what was there. So then we just type in 60 divided by 52, okay? And I'll tell you the number of years. And in this case, it's right about 1.15 years, okay? And again, when we do this, we kind of round it, so I'm going to... That's a symbol for approximately, somewhere around a year and a little bit more. So a little more than a year. So so I'm going to ask her how long it's going to take you. Ah, it's going to take me a little more than a year. Okay, a year and, um, you know, a month or so here, a couple months. So that's kind of how I set up this thing. Okay, but notice different units. Um, we have to tackle that. We have to be able to set up the equation to understand the different pieces. All right, here's our last example for this lesson. Okay. Two brothers who live 55 miles apart decide to have lunch together. Okay, to prevent both from driving the entire distance, they agree to leave homes at the same time and drive towards one another. Now, the one brother, okay, we'll call it brother one, drives 60 miles an hour. So brother one. The younger brother drives an average speed of 70 miles per hour. We'll call him brother two. How long will it take to meet each other? So let's kind of draw a picture. You know, one person's here one house and one person's here or this house. They are 55 miles apart. Okay. One is going at 60 miles an hour and one's going at 70 miles an hour. Okay. Now notice if we just take their two distances and add them up, we should be in good shape. Okay. Now, what is distance? Okay. Distance is simply distance equals rate times time. Okay. So notice we have two different things. We have brother one and we have brother two. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of going through like how can we build an equation based on what we know. Thing is, if you know an equation that works, then use it. Now these are two, when I say T1 and T2, those are two different T's. It's like one's X and one's Y. But they both have to do with time, but they're different times. One's the time for brother one, one's the time for brother two. Okay. Now notice they both um, have the same time. Now in this case, they leave at the same time and erase the same time. So really the times are the same. So I can erase that subscript. So the only thing that changes is the rate that they travel. So what we have here is a scenario. So here's 55 miles. The distance of brother one plus the distance of brother two needs to equal 55 miles. Okay. So let's write those equations out. It has to equal 55 miles total. So this distance is the rate of the first brother times the time they're in the car. And this is the rate of the second brother in the same amount of time because the time's the same. And we don't even know what it is right yet. That's what we're trying to solve for. So let's plug in what we know. We know that the rate of the first brother is 60 miles an hour. The rate of second brother is 70 miles an hour. Okay. So now we have an equation. So notice I, I purposely went through this line because that's the last steps, but I'm building an equation. I'm basing on something that I know works. I'm kind of drew a picture to kind of understand the scenario. And then I wrote a math equation that supports that. So now that I have this, this is my equation right here. Okay. Now notice if we combine the like terms, what's 60t plus 70t? That's 130t. What does that mean? Well, if the two brothers are driving towards one another, relatives one are in one hour, they can cover 130 miles. Okay, 60 miles by one brother, seven by the other. So it's the equivalent of 130 miles per hour. So at that speed, how long will it take them to go 35, or I'm sorry, 55 miles? Simply divide by 130, both sides, and T is equal to, let's see what this works out to be. Plug into the calculator. I gotta look it up here. 0.42 hours. Okay. So that's 0.42. Now again, it's a decimal and it's in hours. Okay. Now again, you know how long is it? You really don't say 0.42 hours. If this was the case, you're gonna convert this to minutes to make it a little bit more logical. So let's kind of go ahead and do that. So we, again, we have 0.42 hours. We need to convert to minutes. So we need a conversion. There's 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, sorry for the handwriting there. I got a little out of control. So let's put it as a unit conversion. Hours goes on bottom, and then 60 minutes goes on top. Okay. So now if we convert it, notice it's going to be 25.2 minutes. So again, 40, 0.42 times 60. Here we multiply, and it's going to be 25.2 minutes. So you're going to say, ah, it's going to take me just about 25 minutes, maybe a hair more. Okay. So this is the answer that we're looking at here. Okay. And that's how we want to solve this problem. So again, going through these examples, we're building equations that have an equal sign and understanding what the different pieces are and then solving them and understanding what each one of those steps is.